Well, good morning. This is Barry O'Dell with the Church of Christ at Mammoth Spring Facebook page. It is Monday morning, April 24th, 2023. I hope everybody's doing all right today. Back to our daily live stream, looking at the divided kingdom, and we are studying our way through the kings of southern Israel, also known as Judah. That's where we are today. Lyle, Janie, Gail, Anna, Sheila, good morning to all of you. Hope you guys are doing well. We've got others on the stream. As always, if you have any questions or comments, use the comment section, and I will acknowledge them when I see them. A lot to learn from all these kings, I would say, for us as individuals, but also, and I think this really comes out today, for individuals, but also for uh, lessons to learn for the church as a whole in terms of good leadership. And we're going to talk about that today in terms of Joash. I think this is the, this is the only king that we're going to talk about today. And so we'll get started here. And so we are on, well, let me, let me go back just a couple of clicks here as to what we've studied just, to, just over the last few days. We've looked at the fifth and sixth kings of Judah. Jehoram was the fifth king. He was evil. And then Ahaziah or Jehoahaz, same, uh, same person. He was evil, and it was uh, he who was killed, Ahaziah, this king right before Joash, who we're going to talk about today, he was slaughtered, uh, murdered by Jehu uh, back in 2 Kings, or recorded in 2 Kings chapter 8. This was all fulfillment of prophecy about the house of Ahab being destroyed. So Jehoahaz is on the throne of Judah. He is killed, and... The throne is then assumed for a period of about six years by his mother, a woman named Athaliah, and of course she is the daughter of Ahab. I mean, we've talked about that in previous in our previous video, so we're not going to go into all those details about her, but you can just imagine the type of person she was, being the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel. What she does when she usurps the throne after Jehoahaz is killed is... And you read this at the end of 2 Chronicles chapter 22, and also in 2 Kings chapter 11, is that in order to uh, establish the throne under herself, she destroys, 2, Kings 22, 2 Chronicles 22.10 says, she destroys all the royal heirs of the house of Judah. And remember, we've talked about this, the, the southern kingdom, the throne goes from father to son. Now, there's, you have this one incident here. But, you know, the, the throne of Israel for some time went from father to son, but then you have some who were not related uh, who take the throne. Well, Judah's not like that. Judah goes from father to son on down the line all the way to the end, except for this period of six years. But she's still, this, this lady, lady, that's probably not the best word to describe her, uh, this woman by the name of Athaliah, the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel, usurps the throne, and she takes that power by destroying all the royal heirs except for one. And as you read Second Chronicles 22 and verses 10 through 12, the last part of that chapter there, you learn that there was one of the sons of, uh, of Jehoahaz, and his name is Joash, who is saved from that slaughter. And so for, for that period of six years while Athaliah is on the throne, Joash, or Jehoash, as he's known in 2 Kings, is hidden and kept safe. So he's going to, I guess you could say, inherit the throne uh, after Athaliah. Now what we have, we'll go ahead and get started now, in the, in the time of Joash as king. What you have in 2 Chronicles 23 are kind of the events that transpired between really uh, Ahaziah and from between Ahaziah, Joash's father, to the time that Joash gets the throne. This, Athaliah, naturally, being the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel, is a wicked woman. And again, we know what she does there in Second Chronicles 22, verses 10 through 12, destroying all the royal heirs. Joash is preserved. But one of the, and this is what I was talking about, about learning some important lessons here for both individuals and for the church as a whole is during this period of time, you have a faithful priest. 
you have a faithful spiritual leader in Judah. His name is Jehoiada. And we we read about him in the King's account, 2 Kings 11 and 12, but also here in the Chronicles account. And I think there's a great deal that we can take from him, so I do want to talk about that for a bit. But, hey, good morning, Miss Louise. What we have is Joash is very young. Okay, so we'll get to clicking away here. He He's the seventh king of Judah, and he reigns for 40 years. And you notice there, I've got he's good and evil. And the, the biblical text will tell us what exactly that looks like as you continue reading. So you get to 2 Chronicles chapter 24. We're going to come back to 23. But you get to 2 Chronicles 24. Listen to the first two verses here. Joash was seven years old when he became king, and he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zibia of Beersheba. Joash did what was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehoiada the priest. Okay, so that his being a good king is qualified by the time frame of Jehoiada the priest. So we'll we'll hone in on that here in a little bit a little while. Faithful while he had that. He spared from the slaughter of Athaliah, 2 Chronicles 22, verses 10 through 12. And this is one of the interesting things. Because a king is not a king by himself. So Joash and Athaliah is put to death. And you can read about that in 2 Chronicles 23, verses 3 and 11. But Jehoiada the priest takes great effort to, to get the throne back in line. Let's just say it that way. To get the throne back to the proper leadership, let's say. But Joash is only seven. Okay, Athaliah is put to death. <clears throat> And she's put to death at the command of Jehoiada. And so seven years of age, all right, you're not going to make much of a king. So what, what you have around you then is an administration. And that's what we see in Jehoiada the priest. And that's why this, why there, I think there are so many lessons for us from this particular event. Now, we're not going to read all of Second Chronicles 23. But what you will notice as you do read that uh, in your own time, in your own studies is there's a constant reference to a he. Well, the he is not Joash. Again, he's only seven years old. The reference throughout 2, Kings 20, uh, 2 Chronicles 23 is to Jehoiada the priest. So just for example, um, 2 Chronicles 23, 1. In the seventh year, Jehoiada strengthened himself and made a covenant with the captains of hundreds. And then it lists who he gets involved here. He gets the Levites involved. He gets the priesthood involved in taking the throne away from the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel, Athaliah, and getting it back to where it needs to be, which, it, which would be the son of Azariah, who is Joash. And so for the first however many years, this seven-year-old is, he's recognized as the king because of the priesthood, but really the priesthood is running things. That's what Second Chronicles 23 lays out for us. Uh, in, in verses 3 through 11 there, and I have it, of Second Chronicles 23, not, not only do you have him appointed as king, but you have him essentially, you have the temple, you have Joash himself as a young boy being surrounded, being protected by uh, the priests, by the Levites. Athaliah is put to death, and he's pronounced as king. All right, so that's, that's a very, I know that's a very short summary, but that's what's happening here in 2 Chronicles chapter 23. She is seized, Athaliah is seized, and she is put to death. And you get down to 2 Chronicles 23, verse 16, and this is what we read. Jehoiada made a covenant between himself, the people, and the king, which now is Joash, that they, would be, or that they should be the Lord's people. That's interesting, because we're talking about the nation of Judah, and they are the Lord's people, but they, they're, they're renewing the covenant because... The kings before Joash are evil. You have the evil Athaliah, the queen, for six years, obviously, being evil. And so the nation naturally is going to drift without strong leadership. And this is, this is the repeated history that we see throughout Israel. Without strong leadership, they go quickly um, to apostatize. They leave the Lord quickly. They, they turn to idols uh, and things like this. And so with this strong priesthood, we make a covenant God's people make a covenant. And so uh, 2 Chronicles 23, 17, all the people went to the temple of Baal and tore it down. Well, that's good. They broke in pieces its altars and images. That's a good thing. Um, verse 18, also Jehoiada appointed the oversight of the house of the Lord to the hand of the priests, 
the Levites, whom David had assigned in the Uh, in the house of the Lord, to offer burnt offerings of the Lord, as it is written in the law of Moses, with rejoicing and singing, as it was established by David. So all of this is good. Good morning, Melissa. Good to see you. All of this is good, and you have good leadership, but, you know, right now, you've got a seven-year-old, okay? He's, he doesn't know what to do. And so really, the throne is in the hands of Jehoiada the priest, all right? Well, one of the things that you're going to see and this is as you get to Second Chronicles chapter 24, and the text tells us, uh, Joash was seven years old when he became king, reigned 40 years. His mother's name was Zibiah. Joash did was right in the sight of the Lord. Then you get down to verse 4. Now it happened after this that Joash set his heart on repairing the house of the Lord. And we learn a little bit about it, um, that it had been neglected. The house of the Lord had been robbed. All of the valuable stuff had been uh, taken out of the Lord's temple and put into Baal's temple, which again, in Second Chronicles 23, Jehoiada, through his leadership and the priesthood, had torn it down, torn down those images. All of that's good stuff, okay? Positive stuff. Um, so he gathers the priests and the Levites together, and uh, I want you to, essentially, I want you to gather up all of your people, all the priests, all the Levites, and let's get to repairing the house of the Lord. So here's what we have. The end of Second Chronicles 24 and verse 5, the Levites do not do it quickly. You know, if you don't have good, strong leadership, if you don't have good leadership that's taking you in a certain direction, this kind of thing can happen. You could have good ideas, um, good thoughts. You want to do what the Lord wants you to do. But if there's no direction from leadership, well, as it says there in Second Chronicles 24, 5, things will not get done quickly. And so King calls them together. Well, he gets with Jehoiada, the chief priest, and tells them, what, you know, what are you doing? Here's what we need to have done. Why is it not being done? And so, why have you not required the Levites to bring in from Judah and from Jerusalem the collection according to the commandment of Moses, the servant of the Lord, and of the assembly of Israel for the tabernacle of witness? Well, if you want to read about that collection, you can read about it in Exodus chapter 30. Um, remember the Levites, the priesthood, they did not inherit a piece of land. They inherited cities around Jerusalem, and they were supported by offerings, by sacrifices of the children of Israel. Well, this has not been, they've not been doing this. And so, well, the work can't go on. And so Joash is telling the high priest, we, we need to get ourselves together here. We need to get going. Um, and so they do. You get to Second Chronicles 24 and verse 8. At the king's command, they made a chest and set it outside the gate of the house of the Lord. They made a proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem to bring to the Lord the collection that Moses, the servant of God, had imposed on Israel in the wilderness. And again, this would be for the support of the temple, well, the tabernacle, but ultimately, of course, the temple, the priests, and all of their, all of their functions within the house of God. Again, all of this is good. We're now working together. Jehoiada is a faithful priest. Joash, for now, is being faithful. All of this is good. But Jehoiada is not going to live forever, and that's what we see here. So this this collection, these efforts in repairing the temple, they they get underway. Let's say it that way. And you read that from 2 Chronicles 24, verse 4, down through verse 14. Um, you get to verse 15 and, and I don't know how many times I've said this, but some of the most important words in the Bible are, but, and if, and then these little words that may seem insignificant, all things are going well. Joash has a desire to restore or repair the house of God. That's a good thing. Jehovah is a faithful high priest. That's a good thing. But second Chronicles 24, 15. Jehoiada grew old and was full of days, and he died. He was 130 years old when he died, and they buried him. Now, okay, there's another important word. He dies now. After the death of Jehoiada, the leaders of Judah came and bowed down to the king, and the king listened to them. Where's the strong leadership? Well, we've just buried him. They left the house of the Lord, verse 18, God of their fathers, and served wooden images and idols. And remember, Second Chronicles 23, I guess you could say technically, 
Joash as king, but all the work in restoring the kingdom and getting things back to the way that the law would have them to be done was really done under the leadership of Jehoiada. One of the one of the things that I see in this chapter or in this account of these two chapters is that each person, and I talk about this in sermons and in Bible classes, it's so important. Each person needs his or her own faith. Um, Joash didn't have... I, there's no indication to me from the biblical text that Joash had his own faith. And what I mean by that is he's just following the lead of somebody else who's faithful to God. Now, it's good to follow someone um, who's a faithful follower of God. You know, for instance, in the church, elders... Uh, Christians, members of congregations, are told to follow the faith of their elders, Hebrews 13, 7. You obey those who have the rule over you. Um, you follow their faith. But while you're following the faith of someone else, you need to be developing your own. And this goes all the way back to Deuteronomy 17. Each king was instructed to have his own copy of the law. And, well, that would make sense because he needs his own faith. He needs to be doing for himself what God requires in the law, not just dependent on somebody else to do it. And then when that person dies, he has no sense of direction. And that's exactly what we see happening here with Joash. So 2 Chronicles 24, 4, uh, verse 17, verse 18, they left the house of the Lord. They go back to idolatry and wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem because of their trespass. All right. So the, the same, so we read passages, Romans 15, 4, 1 Corinthians 10, verses 6 and 11. Um, well, even 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, talking about the inspiration of Scripture. That's Paul talking to Timothy about the Old Testament Scriptures that he had known from childhood. <clears throat> and those things are able to make you uh, complete and thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Well, uh how old was Joash when the decisions fell on him? That's a, that's a good question that I don't know that I have an answer to, Sheila. Um, we know he's 47 when his, when his reign was over, and I can't remember if 2 Kings, uh, going back to 2 Kings chapters 11 and 12, if that tells us, uh, you'd probably have to do a little bit of math with Jehoiada, but uh, we're only told how old he was when he died, so I think it'd be be kind of hard to figure out. Uh, so 2 Kings 12, verse 2, well, it tells us the same thing Chronicles does. Jeho uh, Joash, was he did what was right in the sight of the Lord all the days in which Je Jehoiada, the high priest, instructed him. Uh, so 2 Kings 12 records that. Okay, in the 23rd year of Joash, king of Judah, You've got that. So he would be, in his 23rd year, he would be about 30. Okay. I, I don't know that I can give you a precise answer on that. I don't know exactly. But he's not seven. <laughs> I know that. Uh, so back to what I was thinking about in terms of it's good to have good, strong leadership. It's good to follow good, strong leadership. But what are you going to do for yourself when that leadership dies? Or when that, let's say, like in a congregation, when that leadership changes? Sometimes elders step down for maybe a personal reason, maybe a health reason, maybe their spouse dies. And an eldership can change uh, fairly quickly. Yeah, if he, was, if he was at least 30, he was old enough to know better. Oh, there's no doubt about that. And I would say certainly even younger than that, uh, that he should have known better. There's, yeah, no question. But in a congregation, I think there's a lot to take away from this particular king. Each person needs his or her own faith. You know, you think of scenarios. Um, what if you're a member of a faithful congregation and you have to move away and you go somewhere that... Uh, it's a it's a different a different atmosphere in the congregation. Maybe the leadership is not as strong. You know, what way are you going to go as an individual? What way would I go as an individual? Well, if I've only ever followed somebody else because of what they did, and I've never 
taken the time to get to know God myself, and I've never taken the time to get to know God's Word myself, I'm going to be in trouble. And I think, again, I think that's what we see with, uh, with Joash here in 2 Chronicles chapter 24. So n- not only does he apostatize, and I want to get back to 2 Chronicles 24 now, but as, as God does, this is 2 Chronicles 24 verse 19, but we've already read about the wrath that's coming on Judah because of Joash's unfaithfulness. He sent prophets to them to bring them back to the Lord, and they testified against them, but they would not listen. Okay, specifically, there's a prophet who comes to him by the name of Zechariah in Second Chronicles 24, verses 20 through 22. Um, Why do you transgress the commandment of the Lord so that you cannot prosper? Because you have forsaken the Lord, he has also forsaken you. Well, Joash, who is good and faithful while he had good, faithful priests around him, his solution is let's just kill him. And that's hard to imagine. But again, I don't think Joash has developed his own faith. Uh, He was dependent on somebody else. Now, Jesus actually mentions this incident in Matthew 23, verses 34 through 36. And Jesus gives us a chronology of of the Old Testament, the the blood of righteous Abel to to the blood of Zechariah the priest. This is, we're getting close to the end of Old Testament history here. Let's just say it that way. Jesus was talking about the wrath that was going to come upon Jerusalem in A.D. 70. And he mentions this event when Joash had a prophet of God killed because he didn't like the prophet's message. And so that's recorded for us here. Um, uh, 2 Chronicles 24, 22, Then Joash the king did not remember the kindness which Jehoiada his father had done to him. This Zechariah is the son of Jehoiada the priest, who protected Joash for years, who put uh, Athaliah to death, who had usurped the throne from Joash's father. And because he didn't like what he had to say about him, Joash had Zechariah killed. And that shows you the, well, it shows you his wickedness. He killed his sons, and as he died, he said, the Lord look on it and repay. Well, that's what Zechariah said about it. The Lord look on it and repay. And all of that ultimately, all of this wrath is fully expressed, let's say, in the destruction of Jerusalem in A.D. 70. That's what Jesus says about it. That's something to think about. This is, oh man, what is this, 650, 700 years before Jesus is even on the earth? And God's wrath is building up that whole time against Jerusalem because of their persecution of the prophets. Well, part of the wrath that comes upon him is that he's defeated by the Syrians and assassinated. And so that's the rest of 2 Chronicles chapter 24. Um, let's see. 2 Chronicles 24, 24, the army of the Syrians, the army of the Syrians came in, uh, came with a small company of men, but the Lord delivered a very great army into their hand, because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. So they executed judgment against Joash. And we see that repeated throughout Old Testament history, God using foreign nations, heathen nations, to punish his own people because of their sins. And this is kind of the start, I guess you could say, the start of the downfall of Judah. Because for the rest of their time as a nation, you've got a mixed bag of good good kings and evil kings. You've got enemies. And of course, the last several kings of Judah are evil and then here comes Babylon. But you kind of see it beginning here with Joash. And, you know, you wonder, or at least I wonder, how different could it have been if Joash didn't just rely on Jehoiada to do the right thing? And, and again, I think, that's a, I think that's a great warning for God's people today. You cannot, if you, if you want to do what's right, if you want to be right with God, let's put it that way, if you want to be right with God, you cannot depend, I cannot depend on somebody else to be doing what's right. It doesn't matter if it's a, a spouse, a parent, a child. I have to have my own faith. I have to know God myself. I have to know His will. It's not enough for me just to follow good leadership. Good leadership is good. But good leadership will eventually die. It's like, it's like the, the death of Joshua and all the elders who served with Joshua. When they died, you turn the page to the book of Judges. 
when that leadership died, what did Israel do? Well, they had 400 years of repeated apostasy. And now we see it here with Joash. And so I think, I think this lesson here is one of those that New Testament Christians today need to learn from, uh, take warning from, develop your own faith. Know God for yourself. Know God's will for yourself. Because I can't depend on anybody else to get me to heaven. That's, that's not how it works. And so, uh, that's, to me, that's the, the main takeaway uh, from, this, from this account, from the account of Joash. Well, that went longer than I thought. Uh, I appreciate you guys being on here today. Um, we'll, we'll pick back up tomorrow in Second Chronicles 25 and keep moving our way through the Kings. I appreciate you guys being on here today. I don't see any questions or comments, any further questions or comments. But I hope you guys have a good day. And I hope to see you back here tomorrow at 11 o'clock.